So we're just going to wait for some people to join in. Hopefully you've got a base sanded nice and smooth and ready to paint. Spray whatever colour you want because if you want grey, white, black, green marble, it, it absolutely doesn't matter. Um, I'm going for black because that's what I did on my Stormcast. Um, let's press record on this. Welcome everybody. How's it going? So this is an experiment I'm running essentially in, in, in having two devices. So you guys can paint along, talk to me here. Yeah, I know I'm the wrong way around on Instagram, but I've done that deliberately because I can read the comments. You guys can see what I'm painting there. I can, you know, it, it'll fit on YouTube. It'll all be fine. I'm recording it on this device as well. And I'm probably going to use this, um, these close-up shots as Patreon content, I think. Um, but we'll see how it goes. If it really works well, um, then I, I should give that to me Patreon subscribers, and you know, everyone gets every kind of a benefit. Then I think. Um, so why why am I doing it this way? I I'm doing it this way because. Just doing instructional videos for me isn't quite good enough and I enjoy chatting with you guys so much. So this way during an instructional video you can actually ask questions, Do you see what I mean? You can actually get involved with what I'm doing and I can actually respond. And it is a funny thing as well, if I put my eyes like that it looks like I've got weird shades on like Morpheus. Um, so yeah. Um, that's why I've done these videos this way around, so you can um, you can get the benefit on YouTube for when I um, put them up on there. So here's a question: Has anyone actually got um, paint, brush, and a base ready to paint along with me? If not, obviously it's alright. And it's not as if I'm going to come around your house and do you in or anything like that. Um, but. It'd be really nice if, if if somebody was paying along at the same time. So Bobster Bridges, how are you so good at art and how did I do it at school? I'm, um, I didn't do very well at school. Um, I'm good at art because I practice it a lot regardless of where I am, mate. So yeah, say hi, say hi to everyone else and the rest of the family as well. So who else is here? Let's have a read. People waving at me. Do, 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 do. Right. Grandpappy Nurgle. What are we painting? Marble bases. If you go into my gallery, you'll see my last post shows the marble base from my Stormcast guy. This fella. Which uh, obviously is not lit very well right now. But anyway, go on at me gallery, you'll see what I mean. So, showing you guys how to do all that. So, shall we begin? Let's put me more there. Unless anybody else has got any more questions before we start. Or, should I give it a couple of minutes? Grandpappy Nurgle, you're at your desk, let's do it. Have you actually got the stuff ready? That'd be amazing if you did, if you've got everything you need. So, just so you don't go grabbing any old base, this base has been sanded smooth. Okay. So, why, why sand it smooth? Well, because we're going to be dealing in lots of very thin amounts of paint. And while we want to have rough edges, we kind of want to be in control of those rough edges. And also, marble generally is... Um, when used in, in, in a flooring kind of way, it's generally polished smooth. Um, so we want that end effect. Um, so, yeah. Uh, get your bases sanded. Should we do it? Alright. So, the first thing to realise about painting things like this is get some reference material. 
and you can copy that reference material straight off if you like though you'll probably find that a little bit difficult but it's good to, to, to have a go it's great to copy copy things as much as you can is what I say um, as, 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 a, as a practice tool um, but at the same time you need to learn to, to let go so, so this is an exercise in, in trying to capture the essence of what something is without necessarily copying it and the ability to capture the essence in something without copy excuse me without copying it comes very much from copying a lot so it's like i could very much capture the essence of the english language particularly a mancunian accent but i'm not copying anything i'm winging it because i've copied a lot you know and that's how you learn a language you copy a lot all right so get some reference material the next thing is just like what i said you've got to allow for a lot of things to go wrong and the, the key to allowing things to go wrong not well, not the key the point of allowing things to go wrong is so you can remove the ones you don't like so this 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 process it's it's less about not making mistakes more about choosing which mistakes you're going to allow if that makes sense Grand Papanurga, what colours do you need out? Um, go into my gallery, dive out in. There's a list in my gallery there, mate. Um, because if if I if I just say what's on my desk, here, you might not have equivalents, and I've put just general descriptions of colours. So no matter what brand of paint you've got, you can just do it. There's no point being dead strict about colours. People worry about colours too much. So. Um, we ready to rock and roll so got my base first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some dryad bark um, although I didn't put that in my list I don't think uh, I'm going to get some dry bark I'm going to mix a load of water with it yeah you see you see I always end up throwing water on my palette I always keep little puddles of it on my palette here there and everywhere notice I've got kind of two rough different consistencies the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to speckle the base up in this weird brownie colour. Why? Because the reference material I was copying for that base or drawing inspiration from had those rough textures on it. And I'm not going to speckle it everywhere. Yeah, you can see there. I'm not going to speckle it everywhere. Can you see? Yeah, nice. So just some rough speckles. Now each of those rough speckles I am going to blast dry. Because why wait? There we go. So some rough speckling there. Some rough speckling. Now what I'm going to do is all that again. Why? Because I want multiple layers. I want I want multiple dimensions to show through. And I also kind of don't care too much what what these things look like. I'm just kind of just going to allow. And if I really don't like the look of something, let's say I end up with a big smudge like that. Do you know what? <laughs> I was going to use that as an example of something to take off, but I actually kind of like that. Uh, so you just see, see the way I managed it away into some more rough speckles. There we go. Let's put some up there. It kind of looks a little bit empty. But the aim isn't to, to, to fill to fill the entire area with speckles. It's just kind of to hint at. And we might come back to that stage later on. Because, you know, it's about going with the flow. Drake, no. So, what's next? Rakar flesh. I'm going to take some Rakar flesh. Now, this is a bit that's going to take a little bit of skill. All right. So, load of water there. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about two brush blending. Um, this is just like that, but you don't need two brushes, and you never did do. Um, so we're going to get some paint, 
and we're gonna just wang it on in a rough all any old how. I'm gonna wash my brush and then I'm just gonna start to break the edges of it up. I'm gonna leave a strong edge and a not so strong edge. There we go. And if this paint here dries and leaves a watermark, then that's also cool. But you see how I'm kind of I'm kind of managing this so it has a, a rougher edge. See what I mean? I'm also going to maybe manage it so it goes out in a different direction. There you go. You see guys like that? So this edge is hard and this edge has been softened. Let's do it big so you can see it on all, all Instagram. Let's angle it right. There you go. Right, now it's at this point where I'm starting to look at my work and start to get inspiration from what it should look like or not. I'm just kind of, I suppose right now I'm just kind of doing a lightning bolt shape. Part of me thinks this area is too strong here, so I'm going to get a clean brush and just rub it away. There we go. I'm just going to maybe start another patch here. There we go, like that. Wash my brush. Oh, kind of like this hard line that I've got here, this little hard line here, and I kind of like it as a like an island. There we go. I'll strengthen that now. What I mean by an island, I'm just going to call it an island, but like, hey, you see, it makes that shape there. You see, I've made a little island shape there. Yes. There we go. And again, I'm just going to keep putting stuff on and managing it away there we go I can't kind of like that as it is all right okay so let's put some little more wisps and things here and there there we go Quite liking that quite a bit now. So you can see there's a lot of randomness going on. Alright, so there you go, some nice little stronger lines here and there. This actually is a this is a lot more than I did on the base of, of, of my one. Well, that's just the way it is sometimes. All right, so quite happy with that. Next, I'm going to get this. This is Crick's Bane base um, for no other reason than I just really like the colour. It's kind of not grey, it's kind of not brown, kind of not green. I'm going to get a bit of black. Uh, and I don't often use non g dub paints, but... Games Workshop don't do a paint like, like this, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to mix a bit of black with it. There we go. Let's water this right down. Water it right down. Um, I'm going to glaze that over everything. You see, like, because my thing is waterproof. The water's running off it all weird. Um, I don't care, basically. So what's this glaze doing? It's knocking all the colours into the background. It's putting them on, on another layer down. Yeah, Some people would call that um, a diaphanous or subcutaneous effect. Um, call it what you want, because it does what it does. All right, blast with the air dryer. Each time you uh, add one of these layers, each time you add one of these layers, the, uh, the thing will become more... Um, receptive to layers of glazing now at this stage if it leaves any anomalies well that's also okay anomalies are fine Oops. So 
that's what we've got. That's what we've got. So for you guys on Instagram, uh, if you can see these, these patches there and patches there that are a little bit darker, which is where the uh, where the glaze hasn't taken. So here we go, let's go again. I could always go a little bit thicker. Okay, so it's about knocking the colours in the background, but also giving them a common theme. Um, like if you were if you were used to Photoshop, if you're familiar with things like that, they kind of is similar as a uh, the flatten the image stage. Instead of having lots of layers, um, though you perceive layers on this, it, it, it flattens the image as well and makes it look a little bit more professional. I like that a lot now. There we go. To be honest, I'm almost, I'm almost convinced by that as it is. I think it looks a little bit clunky up here. Um, so, but that's what this stage is all about. It's about fixing those things. So we've got a little bit of black there. So you remember how we made um, these striations? Well, if you don't like any of them at a later point, that's also how you can unmake them. You can put some paint on, yeah, and you can start to wash it out a little bit. There we go. Let's see if we can get the lamp closer to the uh, to the Instagram dudes. There you go. Really straightforward. Really straightforward. So, what's next? Well, it's up to you, really. You can kind of carry on wanging these glazes on until you're happy with it. I think I might just put a couple more patches on here and there. I, think I might even speckle it some more. Just some random stabbings of the uh, of the brush. And it breaks up these what appear to be more deliberate edges. There we go. So I quite like that now. Another blast from the Spice Weasel. Bam. Beautiful. Right, so now we're really getting there. So you can see I've darkened the Rakar flesh colour up, this like eggshell type colour as I describe it. Pushed it really into the background. Um, and I'm really liking where it's softened out. I'm really liking these these softer areas. But I've got a strong area here that I'm still just not quite a fan of. Um, so I'm going to give that another blast. There we go. Now the thing is, even though I'm saying I don't like it, being brighter I am going to brighten it up in a little bit I'm going to take these to almost white in fact um, blue horror is the colour I'll be using brilliant so there's our rough um, marble design let's see if we've got any questions on the old Instagram. Um, Garnet says hi. Um, no questions. Well, none worth answering anyway. Brilliant. Right. Be on the tabletop. Hello. Johnny Morris. Hello. Richard Davis. Hello. Gifts of Chaos. Hello. Alright. So. Um, Corax White is the white I've got for whatever reason. It was just around. Any old white will do. So, the process we did with Rakar Flesh, which is like the two brush blending type thing, but with one brush because you guys are all hardcore and I know you can do it. Um, just like that, but we're gonna scale it all down now. 
Yeah, so wherever we did these long sweeping ideas, we're now going to do smaller, more focused ideas. So I'm just going to start to pick out areas I really like. There we go. I'm going to quick wash and then break up that edge every time. Break up that edge. But I'm going to water this down a lot more. There we go. Gives, by watering it down, it's giving me a little bit more time to work on it. And if I need stronger colour, then I just have to do a couple more passes. There we go. Now, I'm not doing everywhere on this marble. In fact, you might be able to see. Only gonna do certain areas, kind of like as the marble, the the veins in the marble kind of um, move deeper and shallower in 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 the rock. And in some instances, like this, this little patch here, this little patch here doesn't have a hard edge on it. So do you know what? I'm gonna give it one. There you go. This one here's got a little island in it, so I think I'm gonna outline that. So now I'm just kind of looking at the anomalies and I'm choosing the ones I really like the look of and I'm enhancing them. There you go. So in some instances, see I've gone a lot wetter with the paint. I'm really going to start to bring this one out quite like this guy. Yeah, and you see I've got a hard edge and a soft edge, hard edge, soft edge. Yeah, I'm going to bring out this guy as well. Put him in. Might even put some uh, little clouds of less dilute paint in each of those clouds. Brilliant. This has no hard edge, so I think I'm going to give that a soft edge. There we go. Now, this edge now looks a bit too straight, so I'm just going to rough it up a little bit. There we go. Alright, cool. I think I've done this one too much, so we'll, we'll knock that guy back a little bit. Um, I think this line needs to come here. See, a, a, lot, um, a lot of it is me following me gut. But that gut is based out of experience, and that experience is based out of copying. All right, so copy, copy, copy. Um, and then you'll start to be able to ad lib as and when you see fit. Oh, I quite like that. That was not intentional. A little island idea there. I think, I hope the camera's picking up some of the subtlety in these areas. Um, or maybe I should put some in. Let's have some salty. Let's have a bit of a bit of each. Let's darken that down a bit. Let's put some salty in here somewhere, just for the sake of the 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 show and the camera. Generally, I'd go for a more simple base. I wouldn't necessarily go for things as uh, as obvious and as busy. Especially not on that Stormcast guy, because he, because of all the reflections in the non mets he's a pretty busy model anyway. And to add um, loads more business on the base is not a good idea. He's also high in contrast, and what I mean by that is there's lots of really dark areas on him, there's lots of really light areas on him, which is also what I'm trying to avoid on this base. Which obviously sounds daft, because I'm doing black, white, marble. So, um, that's why on the model you see um, a more subtle black-white effect on, on, the, on the marble, on the actual uh, finished mini. There we go. Like that. So you see nice smooth edges. I actually got to rough them up a little bit. There we go. Some of these veins, I'm actually going to fade out. Put a bit more of a cloudy in there. Any questions on Instagram, by the way? There we go. It's 
see, see this puddle of watermark I've left uh, with that last shade and now I'm going to start to bring it in at the mix bring it into the, uh, the composition as a whole I want that rough edge of the watermark I want the light and dark effect of the watermark so you see I'm just pretty much doing the same idea rinse and repeat same idea rinse and repeat so I'm a lot happier with that now let's go back to this dark because this area here that I've got you see this uh, this down there it's a bit too light for me so Gonna knock that guy back a bit. Same way I made him. Good bit of advice that by the way. However you make a mistake, it's the same way you fix it. Just do the same technique, the opposite way, with the colour you came from. And let's flatten this image as well. So a bit of glaze all the way over it all. Now it's starting to look a bit more marbly. Brilliant. To give that a blast. We notice how the uh, glaze has gone on smoother now. The glaze has gone on much smoother. Um, Ratsa um, says, if you want to do green marble, for example, is it the same technique, just different colours? Yes, it exactly is. It exactly, exactly is. Um, Corey001 says, hi, Tommy. Will this be on YouTube later? Busy... Uh, right okay yeah it will be um, I'm also recording a close up shot and I'm going to use that as an experiment and, and if it's if it's a good enough experiment I'm, I'm going to use that for my Patreon subscribers so you'll get two vids on YouTube um, um, one which is me here answering your questions doing a general overview you can see what colours I'm using you can see how I'm using my palette and blah 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 and the other being this close-up camera up here, um, which is pretty much just my palette and my hands. Um, but you're going to get the same audio and the same talk through, so um, you'll see more detail that way. And uh, yeah, like I said, probably put that on my Patreon page um, for me, Patreon dudes. Uh, or I might not. Every now and again, we'll see. Um, and I was thinking that maybe each week we could work on a part of a project you know for an hour between us all and you guys can ask me questions as we go along um, so yeah there's that so let's get back to it so I'm going back to this lighter colour now which was Corax White why Corax White? just because and I'm just going to go back in and using thin paint I'm just going to enhance enhance some of these vein effects that I've got going on and uh, yeah, just in slightly different consistencies but generally they're all pretty watered down now I'm just I'm not going to do them all I'm gonna, just going to leave little patches that kind of draw your eye like, like I said earlier on it's to represent the whatever minerals in the vein of marble kind of flowing in and flowing out now, I'm going to give myself some criticism but I'm not going to change this because it would mean um, adjusting quite a lot of it but you see I've got these two cone shapes I've got this cone shape here and this cone shape here yeah so these two cone shapes this one here and this one here they're, they're, they're too similar for me and I really would like to break them up um, and not have them there because they kind of dispel the uh, illusion of something random and natural um, Oh yeah. But quite like that a lot. I'm making this busier and busier the more I go. Now, in the example of um, marble that I looked at, there was all sorts of different colours, and there was a lot of uh, this yellowy brown in there. So. Exactly the same way as I did with all these other colours. Yeah, some of these veins were yellowy brown. Only some of them, though. Not like really, not all. Yeah, that's uh, years and years of dinosaur poop. 
Who knows, eh? I'll do. Just a couple of them here and there. I might even, because we had some speckles earlier on, didn't we? I might even just put some more speckles in. Again, because the example I looked at had speckles. Mm -hmm. There we go. That'll do. And I've just realised the example I looked at had bone colour in there. Um, but I've left me bone over the other side of the room. But whatever. Alright, cool. Let's wrap this bad boy up. In fact, any more questions? Mark, good evening. Brilliant. Alright, no other questions. Hello to everybody that knew that's joined. Right, so... You can see that this technique, in summary, is about letting things go, having reference material, not that I've used any for this, it's just stored in my memory banks, having reference material, allowance letting things go, it's a mix between sharp and soft ideas, so I'm doing some sharp ideas right now. And generally they'll go on the boundary of where soft becomes strongest in colour. For example, this one fades from black all the way to this, the brownie colour. Don't, probably won't be able to see on Instagram, black all the way to the brownie colour. Yeah. I'm just going to accentuate the boundary where the soft becomes sharp again at the black. So where it fades from black to the colour and then Bang, back to black again and accentuate that boundary but not in every area though okay next there was some flex and flashes through the um, through the marble example and they kind of cut across so I'm using real light touch on my brush real light touch you know, so these lines are like half a mil. Yeah, real light touch and real thin paint. There we go. Nice. Uh, like that. Any questions, by the way? Howdy, Tommy. Hello, Mr. Harland. Do, 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 do. Right. And that, in a nutshell, is how you do marble. How would I do it with white? Well, I'd just reverse all these colours. I'd start with white and start levering on in, in the darker colours in exactly the same way I did with the white. How would I do it in green? Well, I'd just swap all the darker colours for greens I liked. Yeah, whether they'd be like more mid, bluey, washed out jade greens or even a really dark green. Kind of put this in a, like a realm of green by using this uh, Crickbane base a lot. Um, so yeah, there you go. Oops, too strong. There we go. I'm happy with that as an example. And last little bits. I'm just gonna get some blue aura. Blue horror. And uh, just real tighten up some of these little areas of vein work where like where like veins kind of come together yeah so like where they meet where where they converge yeah not not a general marble rule but um, again the example I was looking at that's how it works 
and even if it didn't it looked cool in my opinion which is all that matters and I'm pretty sure it's the right thing to do with looking at it now I'm not happy with this So if you guys were to start doing marble effects, it's a good place to start. I'm sure if you look around the internet as well, you'll find a load of guides um, and a load of different methods on how to do it. Um, they're all valid. They're all valid. And get stuck in. So there you go. And I'm going to bang both these vids up on youtube um so you can watch them simultaneously if you've got any questions please ask um also um if this goes well and it's a useful video then i'll i'll start doing it for my patreon subscribers um and we might we might do a paint along a full model you know do it do a bit each week um like maybe a space marine maybe uh well we'll just we'll make it up we'll see how we get on so yeah there you go on marble effect quite happy with that right goodbye to the close-up camp bash hiya everybody let's How was that? I know on Instagram it's pretty tricky to uh, it's pretty tricky to see everything, um, but that's why you guys get to ask questions. And that's the beauty of Instagram. You get to actually interact with uh, with what I'm doing and ask questions and blah 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 blah. So yeah, uh, Ratster, it's all right, man. Are you, have you got a project in mind that you're going to try that on? While you um, craft an answer, so. Um, in fact, Phil Island. Off topic, we'll watch your view of the Mortal Realms part work. You mean the. Uh, um, you mean the magazine? It's got always going to be good value for the money just for the models alone, assuming um, you're going to be using the models. Um, it's going to teach you how to game. It's just going to give you everything you need, but very com compartmentalised. Um, but again, quick fix for models, it's great. Are the models great for learning how to paint on? Yeah. Um, so here is models from issue two. I have them, uh, if that's any kind of validation for anyone. And here's some of the models for issue one. You actually get loads of models in issue one. Um, chain rasps and banshees. And I, I think the night haunts are some of the best models games which I've ever done. I think they're just great. You know, so yeah, there you go. Um, James, cheers! I'm glad you liked it, man. I'm glad you liked it, Mr. Damien Pedley. Hello, and um, for those that don't follow Damien Pedley, please go follow him. He uh, doesn't like the attention, but he needs it because he's a great painter, like a really great painter. Um, yeah, you see his work in the flesh as well. Like uh, that makes me want to vomit. Um, um, yeah, James, I'm glad you could uh, tag along and watch as well. So, yeah. Yo, yo, another mother brother. Uh, uh, Rasta says, I want to do a green marble eagle for Horus base and white marble stairs. 
Yeah, because I, I, I did, I've done a Horus years ago when he first came out and, and I did these entire base um, in white marble. It'll be on my Facebook page somewhere. Um, uh, the Miniature Painting Tutor. Find that on Facebook. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've got a face painting guide for him in that same gallery as well. Um, and this is pretty much how I did uh, that's that, that base entirely in white marble. But what you've got to realise, this is the thing about bases. Most people, oh, I say most people, some people forget this, so don't be this person. The, the base is just the stage for your model, yeah? The base is the set for the show, yeah? The base is the outfit for the actor. It's, it's not the show. It's not the actor. See what I mean? So most people go nuts on things like that and they make the base without knowing it more of a thing than the model. One thing we acknowledged years ago was um, when I was working at Games Workshop is that there's two things that make or break a model. Bases and faces. And I'd say bases is more important than faces. And here's a hard and fast rule. A good base will make a shit model look good. A crap base will make a great model look crap. And it doesn't matter how well, how well the model is painted. Poor base will just kill your model. And if you do a real good base, and I don't mean all complex and fancy and, oh, look how good I am. I mean just a nicely crafted base. It could be fancy, but not at the cost of the model. Yeah, so good base. Just sand, nicely painted, nicely dry brushed, a couple of bits of flock, maybe a bit of dry brushing on that. If you can do that well, your model will trump anyone else's. I guarantee it. Even that guy off the, you know, that model off the internet, space me like that, with the eyes. You could say that model put on a good base and you'll go, that is a nice model. Pull that over the entire army, I guarantee you'll have an army that catches the eye. Um, but if you've got turd bases, then <laughs> then, then you're done. Um, but so, it, would I do this much um, marble effect? Probably not. You know, it really depends. It's you know, if you're doing marble, you kind of you kind of making a statement. Uh, that statement should never, never. Um, be shouting over over the model so on my stormcast I, I kept it pretty toned down but black was the the, the right color for it black wolf says he's got to go that's what i do cornish mini painter hello <laughs> rasta says yeah i had to rush some stuff and did crap bases and it ruined your work yeah it, it absolutely will do it absolutely absolutely will do um so yeah time we on how long has this video been going i'm frazzled i need a drink thirsty work doing these uh doing these videos so right here's a question if i was to do the next video what should i do i wonder hmm. i've quite enjoyed it i always enjoy um talking to an audience it helps me come alive keeps me on my toes um that's why I love doing courses. Come on, my course. It's uh, next month. It's going to be good. Mainly because I kind of come out of my shell a little bit more and start bouncing off the walls, and that's funny in itself. So I'm told. Um, I have a lot. I have a laugh. In the moment like I kind of break that early morning, uh, and then poof, the 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 game show host turns on, um, and I quite like that guy. I wish there was that guy more often. Um, but where does wishing get you? Where? Um, so, here I am. Alright, guys. If there's no more questions or all like that, I'm going to disappear. Call it a night. Um, and get these uploaded to the YouTube. So, I'm going to end it in 10 seconds. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. Boom.
Uh, Ratster says, don't know if you can make the course, L looking into it. Love your work. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, cheers, man. Um, Phil Allen says, being such a lesson. Dude, been too long, really, hasn't it? Um, Damien Pedley says, ah. <laughs> right, it's all flying in now. Uh, Carnish Mini Painter, I always struggle with eyes, faces, skin is okay, but eyes are the bane of your life, YouTube videos. I already have a video about that on my YouTube channel. Um, the subject of eyes kind of comes in the middle of a, the larger subject about understanding how to, like, how to think about painting, because those that have lessons of, with me understand that I'm all about the way you think and, and what you are aware of. So there's a video on my YouTube channel um, about how I paint eyes and about things to think about. Um, skin vid is a must. Mm, all right, okay, I wonder what model we could do some skin on. See, now skin's a broad thing. What do you mean by skin? Do you mean the colours of a skin or do you mean just... Because um, that could just be, well, choose a colour you like out of a pot. You know? Um, choose a colour you like out of a pot and then the rest of it is is it a line or is it blended? Is it sharp or is it soft? Is it a solid colour or is it a a, 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 a blended colour? Which again, it just breaks down into is it solid or is it soft? Choosing skin tones. Now that's about reference material. Um, I I tend not to think too much about things like that. Um, shadows and lights. Well, is a shiny spot. And if we was to paint this model, well, there's the shiny spot. So I'll put it there. Is it a sharp spot? No, it isn't. It's soft. So I'll blend it. So just you just got to apply that idea across everything you know. It's because all the answers are, are always dead obvious and are always in front of you. you. Shouldn't require thinking about. If 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 you have to think too much about, it, then you're not looking at your your reference material, and that's that's always what it'll come back to. And your reference material could be something from a, a, a picture off the internet, page in a magazine, or a picture you've taken yourself of your own, um, of your own work that has light reflections on it that you like. So make sure if you are going to choose your own light, uh, take your own picture of your own model, make sure it's from an angle with lights at angles that create lighting effects that you like. Um, because remember this, real can look shit. All right, so, so just don't accept. Like, for example, if you just light a model from above, I generally think it looks pretty shit. It looks pretty boring and pretty crap, so uh, don't do it. You want multiple light sources at different distances, at different sizes and luminosities. Um, but again, don't go too many. Um, I like two. I like one major one, one minor one. Um, and I'll, I always like my offset angles. So not quite 45 degrees, slightly weirdly offset. And never symmetrical. Never, never, never. So yeah, man. All about, all about copying. Once you understand how to copy, once you understand how to repeat, then you'll understand how to be original and 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 combine all the things you've copied and repeated um, in your own particular way. Sparky Rob. Ah, oh, hello. Sparky Rob has been one of my most regular students for a long time now, and he's coming on. Put some pictures up, Sparky Rob. You've not got any in your gallery, and if you have, I haven't seen them. Um, so, yeah, um, if you want to see, I don't know, maybe Sparky Rob will put a before lessons and after lessons picture in. That's always about, you know, just trying to get a plug out of here, but, you know. Ah, plug! Ah, that's, <laughs> that's an electrician's joke. Um, shocking. All right. Um, yeah, he's, he's come a long way, man. And uh, if 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 I I'm gonna give uh, you some praise and maybe highlight uh, you as an example. Like when when Rob first came to me, he was very <laughs> mixed up there and had wrong priorities, you know, and one of the few painters that A, sees me on a regular basis um, and B, puts in a practice at the core 
of what I'm trying to do. So he's changed his attitude towards painting, he's changed the way he looks at painting, and therefore he's changed the way he paints. If you don't change them things, and the way you paint won't change. Um, and he's coming on in, in leaps and bounds. So um, yeah, there you go. There you go. Mr. Fishwick, I'm going to give you a wave before I disappear. Because uh, I am about to disappear. Because um, my mouth is dry as Tehran's most arid deserts. Um, yeah, I'm a bit frazzled. I'm a bit frazzled. Alright, dudes. Rock on and or roll. I want to start putting this video on the YouTube beep, 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 beep. Bam Woo Not now Alright guys rock on I shall see you all later I am well Mr Shane Have fun and uh, I'll see you later